fight or flight why is it important to trade in well before we go into too much detail let's try to understand what fight or flight is fight or flight is when the body reacts to danger whether that be a terrifying or traumatic event and this could either be physical or mental now what we need to understand is in fight or flight the body will react to certain situations in different ways whether that be stresses uh, physically or mentally but what it does it prepares the body for what we call danger now there's many examples of this um, some may have been for it others may have not but in an instance we could be on a cliff say we're walking along a cliff and we slip what do you think the natural reaction of the body is going to be then it's going to try to grab hold of something um, look for something to lock on to whatever it may be the body is going to react immediately and that's going to be about thinking another situation that could arise is when we're confronted by a dog that's aggressive what do we do do we run or do we fight we have two options another example if somebody scares you in an instance like that you may accidentally punch him in the nose uh, you may fall to the ground you may scream whatever it may be and a fourth example is say if you drop your phone what do we mean by that well say you was walking down the street you had your phone in your hand and then all of a sudden you buckle on something when that phone leaves your hand the natural reaction is to try and catch that phone as fast as possible and in doing so you either catch the phone or you don't now in the process of all these uh, examples here uh, one thing comes into mind whether it be a scary situation uh, mentally or physically the body reacts to these uh, uh, events differently and it almost feels like you become Superman now why is that important to trade in or we could ask what's the relevance well let's have a look at another situation here now the simple truth about trading and obviously this is a very huge debate amongst many but trading is simply gambling now in order to understand gambling we need to have a look at a few things now obviously gambling is huge in society and when we look at roulette as an example we're going to be looking at 37 to 1 chances in winning our initial bet when it comes to blackjack we're going to have a 48 percent chance of winning over the house and then when we look at slots we're going to have a 50 percent chance in winning over the house now why is trading different uh, some may ask well in trading we have a slight edge okay how we have that slight edge is for our strategy not one strategy is the be all and end all we all must get that in our head but in order to have that slight edge we must trade our strategy to the T. So when we look at roulette, blackjack and slots, we know that casinos will always have the edge. Why? Because they play the odds. If playing the odds work in their favor, then why would they digress or do anything different? All they need to do is entice people to come into their uh, casino and simply play so why is trading like gambling because you're simply risking money to win 
more money. And that's a simple truth. So scientists have now discovered why uh, gamblers continue to gamble even though they lose more than they win. What they say is that a near miss is a signal to the brain that you're able or have the skill set to win, which makes sense because what does your brain do? Your brain processes a win. So imagine now you're in a winning trade and you decide to take a sell. If the market decides to go in the direction of your sell, which in this case is down, and your entry level is around here. Once price starts to move in the direction of your trade, what does that tell your brain? More often than not, your brain is gonna tell you, I may win this trade. If that's the case, what we're expecting to happen, we're expecting price to come down and hit our take profit. Now, if price starts to turn around and go in the opposite direction before it hits our take profit, then our brain, unfortunately, is still in this phase. If our brain is in this phase, then once price starts to turn around, we start to then deny the fact that price is going to come back up and hit our stop loss. But what does that mean for us? That puts our brain in a very, very bad place for future trades. And if that's the case, then it's going to make trading much harder for us because we are, as everybody will call it, denial. In the process of being in denial, we have these statistics, 96% of traders will fail in the markets so this brings us to a question if our body naturally moves into fight or flight mode when we're in danger or a situation uh, uh, causes us to react uh, immediately because of harm or risk of death, whatever it may be, why then does this not apply to trading? Because at the end of the day, we're in trading to win. We wanna make money and we wanna make pips. Simple truth. Now, if we're in a winning trade and the price is going in our direction, it means we're in profit. But then as soon as price starts to turn around and goes against us, we start to lose our profit and then potentially lose our trade. Why did fight or flight not kick in? The three biggest things that I've identified since being a trader and a mentor Ego is one of the biggest killers in trading. Secondly, pride. And finally, and denial. If these three things are the biggest reasons why 96% of traders fail, then what do we call these people? We call them gamblers. And if you're in trading because you want to change your life around, you want to make a little bit extra cash, you want to start your own hedge fund, whatever it may be, this, my friends, needs to be eliminated. Everybody's heard of cart losses, short, let winners run if it was that easy then I'm sure everybody would do it so what do we have to do if we want to become successful traders we need to become master stop-loss traders 
What does that mean? We need to learn to recognize a losing position. We also need to recognize when price is turning. We also need to learn to trail our stops. If you get stopped out of a trade, it doesn't necessarily mean that the trade you took was wrong. It could mean that you've entered the trade uh, too early. It could mean that the trade you took was just the wrong trade altogether. But that doesn't mean that you need to then go and risk your whole balance, revenge trade, and then lose everything that you have in your account. If you get stopped out of a trade, then that should just identify to you um, that you just need to make slight tweaks and maybe find a better entry. Or if you're consistently winning, then you need to tweak your strategy. So one important factor when you're trading is knowing your win-loss ratio of the strategy you are using. If you don't know that, then the first thing I'm going to tell you now is go back and backtest, figure it out and understand how many times you're going to lose a trade and how many times you're going to win a trade out of a minimum of 100 trades. Because if you're able to do that, then this will build faith in your strategy. So if you do go for a losing streak where you lose five in a row, 10 in a row, 20 in a row, 30 in a row, at least you know if you have a 60% winning strategy, these are inevitable and you will take losses. So how do you find your edge in trading? As I said, figure out your win-loss ratio and trade smart. So if you're trading in Forex, the recommended risk to reward ratio will be one to two. I'm not gonna go into too much details about this today. I'll show an example at the end. But if you're risking one pound to win two pound, then more often than not, if you have a 60% winning strategy, you will be in profit. And of course, this is how you then will have the edge in trading. To illustrate this further, if you take 100 trades and you have a 60% win to loss ratio, and every time you win, you win two pound. You then have a 40% loss ratio, but your loss is always at one pound. That will then equal to 120 pound loss, uh, win, and a 40 pound loss, which 40 minus 120 gives you an 80 pound win over 100 trades at 60% uh, win ratio. When these will happen, when this, th those wins will happen, we do not know, but the whole aim is to stay consistent and to continue to do the same thing over and over again. So this is just one tip uh, um, that has really, really helped me in uh, my trading. Uh, say as an example here now, we have a chart. Price is moving in an uptrend. We can see that price is clearly moving up. So our anticipation, uh, anticipation is gonna be to look for buys. What I'll be looking for in this instance is for price to come to take out this high and to continue pushing up in this direction. So what would I be doing? Well, first and foremost, I'll be looking for price to break and close above as a first example, or I can sell, uh, set a buy limit here, a uh, buy stop here, and wait for price to break this high. Once price does move up and breaks this high, then I either get triggered in at this here, level here, at my buy stop, or I'll wait for a close above 
and then enter. Regardless of how you enter this trade, uh, makes no difference. That obviously depends on your trading strategy. But what I'll be looking to do is set in a five pip stop loss. Um, for me, as a scalper, um, this is roughly the average uh, pit range that I will use. And what I'll be waiting for is the price to move away from my entry point by five pips. And as soon as that has done, I'll set my trade to break even. Some people ask what happens if price moves up and then all of a sudden turns around and hits my stop loss at break even. And then as you know, price will continue to rally up. Well, it doesn't matter. You have now secured your trade at break even. Of course, minus uh, your spread or your commission, whatever you may be paying. You could also set your trade to slightly profit so that you can cover those fees as well. But what you have to understand is when we enter the market, our initial thought process was for price to continue push up, uh, to push up. So if then it does decide to turn around against us and hit our stop loss, then we've done one major thing, and that's protected our capital. Okay, this now gives us the opportunity to re-enter our trade. Now, I would much prefer to re-enter my trade two, three times than to take two to three stop losses because of course that then puts me at a deficit where then my net winning trade will only be covering my losses. So what am I trying to illustrate here? Well, all I'm simply saying is if you're entering a buy and price moves in the direction after your entry, take your stop loss into break even and now you have what we call a safe trade. Not a free trade because at the end of the day, when you're trading you're looking to win but you've now protected your capital and you live for another day okay next thing if your trade decides to push up and then pulls back and take your stop loss out you have another chance to re-enter again and obviously that eliminates losses so if price pushes in your direction by five pips, move your stop loss to break even. There's no point risking 10 pips, okay, which would be your entry plus your stop loss to win an extra five pips. Makes no sense, okay? If your trade decides to go in your direction at your entry, continues to push down, you set your trade to break even and price is supposed to do what, or, or not supposed to but price does what you initially thought it would do based on your strategy and continues to push down all the losses that you could have taken before on your first second and third trade will have no effect on this win because you've protected your capital and now you're at a plus even if that means you become a break-even trader more often than not you must understand that trading is about survival and if you're able to survive in trading by preserving your capital then the likelihood of you continuing to make money in the future is going to be much much higher so the big question is are you a gambler or are you a trader? If your answer was trader, then what do you need to do? You need to adopt the flight or fight mentality. And as soon as you can do that, you can start to make improvements in your trading, making slight tweaks, and of course, becoming a successful trader.